<sighs> Should you use an OLED TV as a monitor for your computer? Well, maybe. Let's discuss. If you've followed my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've been a big fan of OLED TVs for a while. I got my first one back in 2017, an LG 65 inch B7, and I haven't looked back since. I've tried some other TVs. Mini LED is pretty sweet, but OLED still has my heart. Right now, I have an LG 65 inch C9 in my home theater space, and uh, even though it's a couple of years old, it still holds its own uh, spec for spec with the current models. For the past couple of years, I've been looking for a giant computer monitor that would give me the same kind of feeling uh, when I look at the C9, all those like, all those things. I've tried out a bunch of stuff and I've never really been satisfied. But over the past year or so, I've seen a lot of people trying out uh, 48 inch LG uh, C series TVs as monitors, Linus on, from Linus Tech Tips, and a few other people. Uh, they got the C10s and uh, some got the C1s. So I thought, well, you know, it was on sale at Best Buy for uh, I think $1,100. Mounted it to the wall right above my desk in my writing studio. I've had it there for a few months, and uh, I think I can safely say that I've gotten over the initial shock of having such a huge screen that's so gloriously colorful and I can speak to uh, whether or not it's actually worth getting one or LG's got a, a 42 inch that they're planning on putting out uh, later on this year with the C2 models. Let's go on. The first thing we need to talk about is how to mount this thing. How you mount a TV to use as a monitor is super important. It's it's not perfect uh, ever, but if you do it right, you can get decent use out of the whole screen. The key is to mount it really kind of close to the desktop, just a, a few inches away at most. There are two ways you can do that with the C1. You can get a mount, like I got a $50 mount from Best Buy that uh, is, made, is made out of tank steel, I think. There are, a, there are of course, <laughs> a lot of other uh, mounts out there that you can get uh, from the super cheap on Amazon to the way too expensive from places like Best Buy. I mounted the TV so the bottom of the TV was really just like three inches from the desktop. That's probably about as high, maybe a, a little bit higher than the base of the TV would if you mounted it on its base. But the benefit of mounting from the wall is twofold. One, you get space to pass cables underneath and stuff like that because it's like a, a long metal base that the C1 comes with. Additionally, uh, the stand has this sort of, it looks really thin and sleek on the front, but it has this counterbalancing weight that's like almost a foot, it seems. It's really big. So you lose a lot of desk space if you put it on there. It's out like 10 inches and if you have a 24 inch desk or 28 inch desk or something like that, you lose a lot of your desk space. Let's go on to how we're gonna set this thing up. Once you get the TV mounted and you get your desk together, you can start setting up the TV for monitor use. One thing I've always appreciated about the LG OLEDs is their colors always look really pretty good to my eye straight out of the box. So I don't fool around with them all that much. Using an LG OLED for a monitor was a little bit more challenging. I struggled to find a setting where the colors looked as good to me as they do uh, when I'm, you know, I have it set up as a TV. Ultimately, I found that the gaming uh, mode was best. It, it just sort of had the most natural colors and that kind of thing. And it has the least processing going on. One big downside to using a TV as a monitor is the inputs, okay? Or lack of variety of inputs, I guess. The TV has HDMI 2.1 on all four of its HDMI ports. Now, what is HDMI 2.1? It's the next level of HDMI. It's only been out for a couple of years. And basically, if you have a next-gen console or if you have a RTX 30 series card, you can then use the HDMI 2.1 protocol to have 4K 120 hertz. This actually makes a huge difference in gaming. Of course, as a TV, there's no display port uh, inputs, which is kind of a drag. If you're on the Mac side, as I am most of the time, unfortunately, um, you're not in as good a situation. Even the brand new MacBook Pros that Apple released back toward the end of the year are only HDMI 2.0, and so they can only do 4K 60 hertz. But hey, but hey, I mean, you know, at least there's an HDMI port on the MacBook now, right? In use as a monitor, the C1 is actually pretty spectacular. Uh, the colors are incredible, and because of the way OLED works, you don't see any individual pixels the way that you would in another TV that like was was right up there, uh, you know 
within say 48 to 60 inches of your face. The view is pretty amazing all the way around. Hooked up to a PC, the picture is sharp, it is flawless, it works amazingly. Unfortunately, on the Mac side, I have to say it's not that great. I don't know exactly what it is about Macs, but they have never handled being hooked up to a non-Apple monitor very well. Whether it's a real monitor uh, that you buy, you know, like a Dell or something like that, or a super pricey TV, for the most part, it looks pretty good. But where the Mac really falls down is in text reproduction, I found. I've tried for many years to get smooth, legible text on a Mac from an external display and have always had mixed results. But the LG C1 is probably one of the best that I've found. There is still little jaggies on the text and they're not rendering, but because of the size, I'm not straining my eyes as much, so uh, that makes it more palatable. Strangely, I have found the resolution is a little bit better using the Mac Mini as opposed to using the MacBook Pro which I guess is good because you have no other way to use the Mac Mini other than an external monitor, uh, but it's still not perfect. I don't know what, if any, difference there is in how the Minis uh, handle video compared to the MacBooks, but I do know just from looking at the two, the Mac Mini is better. Where the C1 really shines is as a hub for your HDMI 2.1 devices. The C1 is about the perfect large format solution for both gaming and anything else you want to use it for until you've gamed on a screen that's running 4k 120 hertz with a non-existent response time uh that you really haven't experienced game well yeah it's it's next gen people there is one major downside to using the C1 as a computer monitor. When you have static elements on the screen, as you would when using it as a computer monitor, you know, you got windows over here and not much is going on. You're not, you know, like full screen with video or anything like that. The C1 has built in some kind of automatic dimming feature that can't be turned off unless you get like LG's a repairman remote like you can buy it on Amazon for 35 bucks but then you void your warranty or something like it, it, it anyway it can't be turned off it's not part of the energy saving dimming feature I have all that turned off but it seems to be something implemented by LG uh, as part of their anti burn in prevention system but suffice it to say you can't turn it off the screen's gonna darken after a little bit of you know you're sitting there just working on something and all of a sudden the screen gets darker uh, I have to gra grab a window and shake it around <laughs> to, get, to get it to turn back on uh, it's kind of annoying to be honest this might be the real deal breaker for me if you're watching full screen content or you're gaming it doesn't happen but since it's not usually the case with computer usage it happens pretty frequently lg if you're listening please give us a way to defeat this feature <laughs> It might shorten the life of the screen. Yes, I understand that. And that's a risk that I, some of us are probably willing to take if it means that we can get away from this like auto dimming thing that's just very, very annoying. So what's the verdict on the LG C1 as a monitor? I paid $1,100 for the C1 and that's the lowest price that I've seen so far. You have to balance that, that idea of that much money versus how much you want that really big screen that looks great. And honestly, if it was a perfect experience, I would I would recommend it more highly than I would uh, right now. Most people probably shouldn't spend that much money on something that's not purpose built for what they're gonna use it for. And that's really where the LG C1 sits. But for those of you who want the big screen, you want the OLED picture quality, and you don't mind spending that money, then it, it, it it's a really good experience. The dimming is a drag, but I found ways to sort of work around it. it. It doesn't bother me as much as it did in the first month or so. Whether I'm gonna wanna deal with it for the long term remains to be seen. Honestly, I'd say this. If you have a PC, or you're gonna plug in one of the next gen consoles and you can use that HDMI 2.1 to get the 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, there's nothing better than the C1 for gaming and productivity is pretty darn good too. Macs, as I said, are notoriously horrible with that external monitor scaling. That's a lot of money to spend for a less than perfect experience. Of course, the next best option is probably the XDR display and that's stupid money, so, 
I would wait because there are rumors that Apple's coming out with a newer, lower-priced monitor for uh, us people who can't afford the $6,000 XDR display. Uh, I'm anxious to see what LG does with the upcoming C2 line. It shouldn't be too long before those come out. Uh, they are bringing out that 42-inch model, and it looks like LG is positioning these smaller TVs as computer monitor options. What I would love to see in the new model and maybe even in a firmware software update is to give us a true PC mode or something like that. Uh, after three months, I'm still not 100% sold on the LG C1 as a monitor, but so far I would have to say the benefits outweigh the detractions, so I'm going to stick with it for a little while anyway. What about you? Would you use a 48-inch television as a, as a computer monitor? I mean, it's it seems ostentatious, it seems gigantic, but once I got used to the size of it, it really wasn't all that different than, say, a 32-inch monitor or a 49-inch or a, or a ultra-wide, both of which I've used. Let me know down in the comments. Once again, my name is Jason. Thanks so much for being here. Until the next time, I'm out.